Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and if you're new to the channel then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel, so make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell. But on today's video I am reviewing the ASUS ZenBook Duo. Now there are a few different versions of this laptop, plus there's also a pro version, so I will have the links in the description below to check it out and also see what other customization options you guys have. But the version I have here is just the ZenBook Duo, it's not the pro version, it's got the 1080p display and then you have the 1080p uh, screen pad, is that what they call it? It is called the Screen Pad Plus, so I was right on that one, luckily. And it's basically like having one and a half display. So you've got a full display here, and then you've got a half display that is actually full touchscreen. It's a 1080p display, super responsive, and really, honestly, it's, it's so good. Like, I thought it would be a little bit gimmicky. I didn't know how much kind of functionality you could have with this unit itself, but it's really useful, honestly. Like, you can have whatever you want on that bottom display. So you could have your editing program up on the main display. Then you could have your notes on the bottom display. You could have, like, a PowerPoint presentation, and then a Word document, and then your research. If you're a musician, you can have, uh, like, maybe some chords below. And then you could have, uh, like, some YouTube video showing you how to play something. You could have some lyrics on another s section of the display itself. So, literally, you can choose what you want, like the options are limitless. You can basically do whatever you want. It's like having a dual display, but you've got half a display that's touchscreen and then a full display that's not touchscreen. There is also a version out there which is the ZenBook Duo Pro, which actually has 4K for both of the displays and both the displays are actually touchscreen as well. So that's an option as well if you want to check that one out. But this version here is the 1080p version with one and a half displays we'll call it. And it actually has 8 gigs of RAM, it has an Intel Core i5, it's running Windows 10, it has half a terabyte of storage with an SSD, um, also, when it comes to the graphics, I'm just loading that up, it is a GeForce MX250. So honestly, quite a powerful little unit, and for most people out there, for just everyday use, it's going to be fantastic. To be able to have that additional display has just made me so much more efficient. To be able to have a proper display to have my editing program open or to have some, you know, some information on the main display. So if I have my YouTube channel there, for example, I can then have my notes below on the touch display. So I can use that as a reference point when I'm typing out my titles or my descriptions or if I'm setting up a podcast or a new YouTube video. Like, honestly, the possibilities are endless and you can kind of do whatever you need to with it. So the people who have asked me, is that a gimmick? Are you actually going to use that? Yes, you will use it guys. Think about it. It's a whole display. It's half a display crammed into, sorry, it's a whole display crammed into half a display. You can stretch it out. You can have three separate windows. You can have two windows. You can swap the two displays very quickly with a, a, a hotkey basically. So all of that works phenomenally. Like I've been really impressed with the use of this additional display down here and it's actually made it a lot more efficient for my workflow. Now the one thing that kind of slowed me down with my workflow is this tiny little trackpad here. So they've basically crammed it in the corner and then you've got a keyboard here. So I found that my hand would cramp up a little bit with this little trackpad down here. I think you might need an additional mouse to be able to make you a little bit more efficient. Plus if you're left-handed you're going to be coming over the keyboard, so that's not as efficient. You want to be able to use the mouse and then kind of come back to the keyboard. I guess you could use your left hand and come back, but it's not as efficient. One thing that I kind of got used to, which you might be able to see here on that side view, is basically I'd use the trackpad with my right hand, and then with the left hand I would use the touch display to go through my information. So I'd kind of just scroll down, find the info, use my trackpad to go to the top display, and then just start typing. And I found that really efficient and it was easy to get used to. I did find, like I said, my hand would cramp up a little bit with that little trackpad, but I got used to it very quickly. Also the key bad, the key bad, the keyboard was a little bit crammed at times. Uh, I guess I'm used to a larger keyboard, but again, I got used to that very quickly and it wasn't actually an issue. It was 
actually pretty easy to get used to over a period of time. Um, I've played Rocket League on here and it runs pretty well. Uh, Sony Vegas runs quite well, it's just the basic editing program. And just for everyday browsing, it's honestly super easy. So it depends what you need a laptop for. That's kind of the ultimate question when it comes to anything you're gonna buy, whether it's a camera, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a fan for your room, you want to know like what you're actually gonna be using it for. And the example with the fan was terrible because you use a fan to cool you down, and right now I'm sweating so much, but I can't have the fan on because it's gonna ruin the audio. So actually what I need is I need a quiet fan. I need a, a fan that just doesn't make noise. That would be fantastic. Then I can record my videos and not sweat. Like I mentioned in my first impressions, this unit is so pretty. It's elegant, it's beautiful. It really has that futuristic design, especially with that little stand that kind of props up as well. It's a beautiful laptop. But, it is such a fingerprint magnet. Like, it's so glossy and pretty, but it's just such a fingerprint magnet. So, if that annoys you, you need to make sure you have some sort of cloth, microfiber cloth, or something with you at all times. That's not really my problem at all, like it's annoying, but it doesn't actually bother me in the slightest. Then it comes to the ports that are available. So on this side, we have a full HDMI port, we have USB, we have USB-C, we have a charging port. We then also have a micro SD card slot, which is really handy for me because I'm using a lot of action cameras and I'm using a lot of cameras in general and technology and a lot of them use micro SDs. So that's really handy for me. Um, some people might use a full SD, so that probably wouldn't work for them. You can get adapters and whatnot, so that's an easy workaround. There's also a microphone headphone jack and another USB port as well. A very pretty simple laptop with kind of everything you need. It's also got the face recognition, so as I open up the display here, it'll automatically log me in, I'm ready to go, it's right where I was before, both displays load up. You can also disable the bottom display if you don't want that as well. So honestly, they've thought about quite a lot here and they've made it work really well with that additional display down the bottom. So the overall user experience for me has been phenomenal, like I said before. For me, this is like a natural evolution. If you want a laptop with a dual display, this is pretty much the best on the market right now. It's one and a half displays, it's the touch display on the bottom, really responsive touch display as well. Everything is just efficient, like if you've got a brand new computer as well and you don't kind of bog it down with all the crap and you just have the bare essentials on it, it runs really well. Like Rocket League runs perfectly fine, um, I've also noticed my editing program's fine. When I've got multiple tabs open as well, multiple uh, applications open, it just runs beautifully. And it basically, Windows recognizes it as an extension of the display or you can change that setting as you want, so I've kind of just made it a, an extension of the main display so I can just drag and drop whatever I want and it actually is really efficient so I'm really keen to see how this goes after a period of time I've only kind of been using it now for a month or so and it's been fantastic like I've really enjoyed using this laptop so I'd love to know what you guys think of the Zenbook Duo if you've grabbed yourself one I'd love to hear what your experiences are like with it anyway thank you so much for watching make sure to have a fantastic day and peace out